Hello and welcome along to day four of the Galway Summer Festival and it's Ladies Day Hayley. We're here for Ladies Day. It's the biggest day of the summer in racing terms. It's the biggest day of the year in attendance wise. Uh, there's going to be a huge crowd through the turnstiles here at Galway today and to grace the occasion we've got our all-star cast. We've got Mr. Brendan Duke. How are you? I'm very well David. And we've got Miss Haley O'Connor. How are you? Mrs. Sorry, Miss. What's your name now? No, it's still O'Connor. I'm not changing it. Haley is actually recently married, so she's off the shelf, isn't she, Brendan? <laughs> yes. Bad news. Yes, 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 yes. Bad news for men everywhere. And uh, obviously, it's Ladies Day. Do you know what my attire is? I, you were walking up here. <clears throat> you were walking up here, and I just said, "Who does he think he is?" I, you're kind of gone for the McGregor sort of. Get yeah, up. yeah, my body is just as good as Conor McGregor's underneath the suit. So uh, we're going to rattle through the eight races on Guinness Galway Hurdle Day. And we're going to start with the feature because some people mightn't get to five minutes in. So the people that want to tune out, they want to see the big race. So we're going to start off with the sixth race, the 435, the Guinness Galway Hurdle. And uh, what a cracking contest we have in store, Haley! Plenty of market movers. I think at the minute Max Dynamite is favourite. Yeah, um, Max Dynamite uh, currently 4-1. to one. Um, We thought we were sort of ducking him at 6 to one. Then our traders came in this morning and uh, it seems that the other bookmakers were ducking him even more. So um, I suppose, look, he was he was he had that Doncaster Cup. He was second in the race a couple of years ago and he was second in the uh, Melbourne Cup and he, he could be absolutely thrown in. But like the belief in Chains Hill went astray yesterday. I'm sure he'll win a massive one next time out. Um, and I'd be opting for something different at four to one, but I don't find that attractive. Um, so Swamp Fox, obviously, he loves the, the um, he loves Galway. Uh, Joseph Murphy's an amazing foreman. For that reason, I'm not surprised to see him gone from um, 16 into 12 to one. Um, shrewd, uh, there's been some shrewd cash around for number 20. Um, I was on the phone to our traders and they were had a couple of monkeys each way coming in for him and that's pushed him into 16 to one. Um, from 20 to 1 and in terms of something that uh, that I like um, I mean you would be hoping that uh, Tim Ian will go to justifying his price tag and uh, think that he has a lot of ability that we haven't seen yet he's 8 to 1 from 10 from Gordon Annie it used to be Dermot Welch which would be a real kick in the arse wouldn't it she'd hate nuts it. that's the word there <laughs> uh, so what's, what's your selection um, my selection is Tim Ian Timmy Ann, so Timmy Ann from Haley, for Haley O'Connor from Labrooks. Uh, Brendan Duke, you love these big handicaps. You've been up all night, dr not drinking, uh, studying the form, trying to find the winner of the biggest race of the week. Have you found the winner? Come on. I, 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 I think I was uh, talking to my driver on the way down and he was saying... You weren't shaving anyway. He was saying... A bit, bit of stubble there today. Yes, yeah, yes, I do. Uh, a, a, a little bit, just for the ladies, but uh, he was, my driver was suggesting that I'd miss the price on Tigers River at 12s. But I think 7s is still fair. Fifth last year, granted £5 higher. The £2 for Bellius sound a bit annoying for just cantering around, but hopefully won't make the difference. And I just have this memory of his performance in the Curra this year when he travelled all over them. He won't mind the ground. And I, I think he's a, he's a fair bet at 7-1. Mm, well, Tigger River was going to be my selection. And I actually did stay up late last night and I went through the race with a fine two comb and I came up with Western Boy, who I thought was brilliant at Punchestown. Returned from a long break there. We loved a bit of ease in the ground as well. And, uh, and a mover in the market this morning. Yeah, and a mover in the market this morning. And if you remember all those years ago, we nearly beat Vaulture. Do you remember that? In Punchestown. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I think uh, Western Boy is very, very interesting under Jody McGarvey. There's going to be eight different hats in the race now. And uh, Western Boy has got the purple one. So, yeah, hopefully we'll be in the purple after uh, Western Boy wins the Guinness Galway Hurdle. So uh, the first race of the day is off very early today. So those that have hangovers uh, mightn't make the first race. It's the Guinness Galway Gold Beginners Chase. And Haley O'Connor, where's the money going this morning? The first two horses, uh, number one and two, A-rated and uh, Bellella boy. Um, A-rated uh, won uh, point to point in Liggenstown and um, is from the same sort of graduation as one for Arthur, am I right? Wow. That is impressive. <laughs> and uh, the other horse is they're backing the Gordon Elliott horse under Davy Russell, who can just do no wrong at the moment. I was just looking at the paper. See the picture? Isn't he just so photogenic, Davy <laughs> Russell? Isn't he? He just knows what to do in a picture. Like, I must get a few tips off him. You could be doing a few tips for him as well. Yes, in in indeed. Uh, this is pretty trappy now, this first race. But uh, what about the Tesseract, which for a horse at a relatively low level operates at a four... That's one of them ones that works well with the day. 
the it's, tesseract. Yeah, the tesseract. It, it, well, alliteration, you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're a fiend for the alliteration. Yeah. Um, but uh, Tesseract, 45% strike rate lifetime, very impressive for a horse at this kind of level. Uh, took a couple of runs to get its eye in and bumpers, a couple of runs to get its eye in over hurdles. Maybe the couple of runs will have got its eye in over fence. We'll need to jump better than it has done, but could do. Around 8-1, to one, I thought that was fair. Tesseract for Brendan Duke. And I'm going to add uh, more, even more confusion to this because uh, I actually like Balella Boy, who I thought ran quite well for a long way. Made a mistake at the third last at Wexford, so uh, Balella Boy for me. Uh, so moving on to the 215, the Guinness Open Gate Brewery Novice Chase. Uh, what a cracking contest. This is a great three. And we're hoping that our columnist in the Racing Post, Jessica Harrington, will finally get off the mark. And I think she will here, Haley. Don't touch us. H grade one winner over hurdles. Rated 150 over fences. Surely this is going to win for Jessica, is it? Well, she said the horse is a brilliant jumper and she said that she believes he can go all the way to the top. And for someone who's trained the likes of the horses that she's trained, he'd really believe that. But it's not reflected in the betting. Um, he's drifted out to nine to four. Um, I think I'm, I'm not, I think he was about 15 to eight this morning. Um, Townsend is he looks like he could be more of a chaser might be better chaser even though he's a little bit small and um, he's about seven to four but i just can't look beyond don't, don't touch it and i hope he continues to drift and and we get some value don't touch it don't touch it don't touch it. Well, I, mean, I wanted to talk to you about this because you seem to have a great insight into this horse. You needed the, a tune up in Fairy House that then kicked on and did the business for you in Punchestown. Does he need the run today? Is that why? Well, I can't understand why he's not favourite. Well, uh, I, I was, uh, he was my nap of the week at Punchestown and he duly delivered by half a length. I know he only crambled home, but he's a scorpion. He idles when he gets to the front. And uh, yeah, I goes right Jessica's column for her. And uh, she told me on Monday that this was her best chance of the week. Oh, Grant. Well, I don't I, I, I'll back it, so I think it should be favour. I mean, it's well in the way and Townsend needs better, well, prefers better ground. I thought Don't Touch It should be fab. So there you go. Do touch it. That's the advice from our uh, all-star cast here in the 215. So the 250 is the Guinness Draft Handicap, and this is my possibly my strongest fancy of the day. I like Ozzy Valentine. Brendan Duke. Oh, I don't, I'm going to go broke back in this stipulation. Um, I put him up earlier in the week. Well, you won't be backing him today. He's not running? He's not running. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, why don't you make a compelling case for your bet of the day? And Because I haven't got a tip now. Ozzy Valentine. Uh, now, the draw is the big worry. Ozzy Valentine's drawn out in stall 12. Will love this hill. Love the ground. Um, I just think everything is in. Like, it's just a hardy handicapper that just tries hard and hopefully he'll get into a decent early position and Colm O'Donoghue will break, bring home the bacon. Haley O'Connor, what do you fancy here? Um, I'm sort of liking the look of this uh, Clonard Street, a horse that was tried in a Group 1 company as a juvenile mm. in France, I think. Um, they're backing him. He's 8-1 uh, to one from... Put up by Gary O'Brien in at the race this morning. Yeah, and another horse from Tony Martin's yard who went to Gordon Elliott's yard and then came back to Tony Martin's yard is Boe uh, Sublime and I think he's an interesting runner at about 20 to 1 or thereabouts. Okay, under Colin Keane. So there you go. That's the 250. Uh, the 325 is the Arthur Guinness Irish EBF Corrib Philly Stakes and uh, Brendan Duke, you tipped a non-runner in the last. Yeah. Are you going to tip another non-runner here? No, I'm not. Um, I, I'm so frustrated about this weather because I think Raimonda w was one we could have got stuck into out of Wells because it's... Stable in form. Well, it, the stable is a terrible form ground, but the horse has been in good form. It's, it's run two good runs out of three this year. The only time it's run below par was on easy ground. She just doesn't seem to handle easy ground. Drumfad Bay's got the penalty. I think Music Box probably prefers better ground as well. Uh, I know she won a maiden and Gorn on heavy, but that was a penalty kick. I mean, wasn't that good a ground last time, behind only mine? I, I thought it was okay. A decent ground in that. No, I thought it was soft. Oh, okay. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. It was... Please be right, please be right. Oh, it was. It was good ground. Good, good. Well, uh, Did it not rain beforehand, though? Uh, um, uh, but possibly. Look, look, look I mean, uh, she's a Galileo. These Galileos, they, they run through walls for you. Mm. But what about this orangey red, mm. who's having a fine season mm. and certainly won't mind the, the, the given the ground. And another ex-Dermot Weld horse. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so there's your each way double today. What price are we talking orangey red, roughly? Around 10 to 1. Oh, nice. So orangey red for Brendan Duke for Haley O'Connor? Yeah, I mean, listen, it's it's unbelievable that Raymond is 5 to 1, would probably be a 7 to 4 shot if, if the fortunes were a bit different for Dermot Weld. Um, a couple attracting support, um, Drumfad Bay has the £3 penalty, but as a listed uh, performer, won the Ken Rouge in 
Killarney, I think. Um, 11 to 2, but look at that draw out at number 12. I wouldn't fancy that. Um, but Elusive Beauty from Ken Condens. I think to this, she won a. Carlisle. Carlisle, yeah. Um, and obviously, uh, Ken's really smart. Delighted to see. What's the name of the horse that I love that won? Success Days. Yeah, I absolutely love him. Great to see him coming back to form at York. Um, so I'm going to go with Elusive Beauty uh, at about 11 to 2. Backed all the way in yeah. from 14 to 1. Huge money for Elusive Beauty uh, this morning. So that's the fourth race. The four o'clock is race five. It's a Guinness Novice Hurdle. Hopefully this is going to take very little time. I think Lac Kivu is a star. Do you? Uh, I'm not sure if he's a star, but the fact that you were talking about Cheltenham in August <laughs> about this horse says it all. Bhutan will have to jump an awful lot better to get even close to him. So Lac Kivu for me. Lac Kivu, Haley. Do you know what's putting me off lack of is the lack... That we both fancy it. No, well, <laughs> but the lack of support from in the market looks like a banker, sluiced in, um, but we're not seeing much of it. Um, so I'm going to go for it's all guesswork because... Um, that's the way I think my punting has been for the past couple of days. Uh, don't be hard on yourself, Hayley. You're one of the shrewdest women I know. <laughs> uh, so moving on to, we've done the Galway Hurdle. So race seven is the 5.15. And what a nightmare this is. It's the Guinness Harp Handicap. And core specialist Camlan is back for the Shark Handling, who is already among the winners. Yes, of course, uh, and you, you'd have to respect Camlan, but the USA goes well on the course as well and ran a fine race here on Tuesday over an inadequate trip, really tried his heart out to battle back, was coming back at the line, this trip more suitable, just hard to see him out of the frame, I thought, at around 8-1. to one. Yeah, I am a USA fan as well, we're doing a lot of agreement today. This is good, well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so United States for us? Um, yeah, well, so um, I was supposed to be doing a preview on Tuesday night. Unfortunately, I missed it, but I did get the charity bets through and uh, one of them was from Shark Island for Camlin. He had a 20-1 to 1 winner yesterday, but he didn't give us that. But, uh, look, he was 128 over hurdles and 68 or something, 65 uh, on the flat. So, looks thrown in. That's good enough for me at 5-2. to two. They're also backing uh, Bogor at 8-1. Okie dokes. And the final race on Ladies' Day at Galway is the, if I get my race card open, it's the Guinness West Indies Porter Flat Race at 6 o'clock. It's an absolutely desperate bumper. Let's call a spade a spade. Let's call a spade a spade. And you could argue that Dynamos' fourth here earlier in the week sort of stacks up well against the Emmett Mullins uh, Fav and did shape, there was a few quid for it as well, and did shape like the extra trip would help. So Dynamos for me in a poor heat. Dynamos for Brendan Duke. I fancy absolutely nothing, Haley. Can you shed any light on the subject? Yeah, I'm going to back uh, something that I was glad to see a bit of money come for. The favourite is obviously Obviously, Peacock Secret at six to five, um, but on Ladies' Day, I think Katie Walsh is going to ride a winner uh, in all good things. Okay, dokes, and it's number three, the aptly named Chateau Neuf de Pap. Did you ever taste that? I did. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I don't really like wine, but I like Chateau Neuf de Pap. So the final thing to do, come on, let's get the naps up today. Come on, right, Brendan Duke. People want to do Trixie's trebles. What is the first leg of the preview in association with Labrooks? What is the first leg of the Trixie? I'm going to chance this orangey red. Okay, this could be a big price, Trixie. So give me a time, orangey red. Orangey red in the 325 for Brendan Duke. Haley O'Connor? Clonard Street in the 250. So Clonard Street in the 250 for Haley O'Connor. I can't go for Ozzy Valentine now. Because they want to do a treble. Okay, so instead, I am going to play it simple and go for it. Don't touch it in the 215. That's it from us, folks. My, my sincere thanks to Brendan Duke, independent racing expert. Right. Haley O'Connor from Labrooks. I've been David Jennings from the Racing Post. Best of luck with your punting.